Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, and today we are joined by Kevin Roth. He's an internationally known dulcimer player, singer, songwriter, and recording artist, His recording career began in 1974 with Folkaway Records, Smithsonian recording 14 albums for the prestigious folk music label. In 1984, Kevin began to record award-winning children's music on his own label. He sang the theme song for the hit PBS television show Shining Time Station, as well as composed and performed several of the music videos Kevin has an extensive history in music, and I could read through it all, listeners, but I want to hear from Kevin. Welcome. You've got a very long bio here, and I don't want to just read it. I want you to explain to the listeners what you've been up to and how that journey played out for you. Well, as you said, I have been a professional musician, played the dulcimer and piano and sing and I have, I think there's about 55 recordings out now under various labels, but mostly my own. And the last one was the CD of songs that goes with my new book, Between the Notes. So there are lyrics in the book, but you can download the CD and hear it too. So that's something new. And I was, you know, an average kind of musician going around touring. I thought I was pretty successful. I wasn't really that happy because I was always searching for happiness. And I thought it would be in financial security, and it wasn't. I thought it would be in having a relationship with someone, and it, that didn't pan out either. <laughs> so uh, I was content, but I was looking for more. And then I had what I call a kind of a spiritual wake-up call. I was diagnosed in 2015 with stage three melanoma and told I would have only two years to live. So um, that, of course, was seven or eight years ago, and cancer never came back. But it made me look at my life and say, well, what, you know, if you only have a year or two left to live, how do you want to live your life? And I decided I was tired of being depressed. I was tired of being in debt. I was tired of feeling uh, stuck and living in fear. So I redid my life, which led me to becoming a a consultant, a really mentor, teacher to people, teaching them how to live a happier life. And a lot of that has to do this with really radical self-love and dealing with fears and living your bliss. So I now combine my music with this new purpose. Fantastic. All right, let's get into our standard three questions. Your first one is, what can your expertise do to accelerate health? be it physical, emotional, or spiritual? In my experience, it's living an authentic life and finding some sort of spiritual grounding, something other than just your your own self. So when you're living a life that you're happy with by following your bliss, and you know what matters and why it matters, and you execute them, you've got all you really need. And we talk about wealth here as well. People think wealth is just the financial, but it can also be personal and emotional wealth. So what are your top three tips to creating wealth? The first tip I have is your health. If you've got good health, you've got your first couple of million. Your second is your peace of mind, uh, which really is related and connected to your health. And that has to do with, again, living an authentic life and really loving yourself and therefore loving others. And the third thing is financial wealth is not bad, 
but it's not the true wealth because it can come and go. If you latch on to things that are lasting joy and happiness and self-love and helping others, that doesn't come and go. That's something that you're in control of. So it's not the stock market or, you know, the environment. So that's something that you have, in a sense, control over. And then you're very wise and rich. And our final standard question is around weight loss. Have you ever battled your weight? If so, how did you win the battle? And what can you offer the listeners who might be on that journey? Well, I have been an emotional kind of compulsive eater for most of my life. And as they say, it's not about the food. It's really about uh, what sets you off that you feel you need food to numb your feelings. So what I do is I really ask myself when something comes up that's aggravating or stressful, I simply ask myself, and, and I teach this to my clients, is it true? You know, is that letter that you just got in the mail that you think is bad news? Do you know if it's bad news? So you find out the truth of things. And then the fear, which is really false evidence appearing real, subsides. And then for me, the need to stuff down emotions goes pretty much away. And there's also trigger food. So for me personally, if I have pistachio nuts or peanuts or cashews, in the house, um, I can't just eat a handful of them. I'm just sort of addicted to them. The same with sugar. And sugar is terrible for cancer, as is any kind of inflammation. So I don't bring those things into the house. And the third tip I would have would be to have some sort of a spiritual connection. Again, something sort of bigger than you that you can meditate on so that your mind isn't the problem. Because it's really the mind you know, as the Buddhists say, no mind, no problem. So when you believe your thoughts, thoughts are feelings. And if you don't know what to do with either as a compulsive overeater or binge eater, or even, uh, you know, someone who's anorexic, you go to the food because it's just like a drug, you know? Great. Now let's talk about what it is that you do and how you can help the listeners with what you do. I teach people how to live a happier life. Uh, most people are not that happy. A lot of people have stress. They feel stuck in life. They have a lot of debt. And they're, they're, there's no self-love. There's, it's just dealing with fears and problems. And they want to get out of it. They want to be happy, but they don't know how. So I ask my clients, Number one, what don't you want in your life anymore so that there's clarity on that? And then what do you want in your life? And we discuss why you want that and what that would mean to you and how your life will be different if you achieve that goal, which most are achievable. And then getting a game plan and working with the individual client in their own way, it's a partnership to, to help get them out of, of stinking thinking. So that's basically what I do. Uh, I teach people how to live a happier life, radical self-love. Now, with years as a musician, we know that music can stir emotions. Do you use music in your coaching? Do you encourage people to attach to that emotive way of, of thinking? Well, there's scientific evidence. Well, I don't know exactly where, but there's a lot of scientific evidence. Uh, you can find it on the internet that music is a healing entity. It, it, it's a healing process. I play an, an instrument called the mountain dulcimer, which is a very simple folk instrument. I, I sell them. And I also teach something called dulcimer meditation, which is a process of just playing to myself very gently, very quietly, and then listening to my own self, sort of inner inner world, uh, my inner voice. I choose to do that because I get distracted if I'm listening to other kinds of music. If I just sort of lullaby myself, things will, will come up that usually don't come up 
in, in an ordinary circumstance of just thinking and writing and contemplating. So a lot of people have learned dulcet meditation and find it very simple and very useful. But any kind of music is very, very healing, whether you can learn to play an instrument or, you know, just even basic singing has a vibrational qualities to it that are very healing if you do it correctly. So I often talk with other guests, you know, we mention meditation quite often and I'm not the best at meditation, but for me, putting 80s music on takes me back to a time of being carefree and, you know, fully healthy and nothing was ever going to touch me. I was invincible. So I love that music can transport me back to when I was truly happy so I can experience that joy again. If music can do that, why don't you think that we use it more to take us back to happier times? What is the fear around that? Well, I think many people do use music, but they don't realize that they're, <laughs> that they're doing it. You know, I think fear is really, you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. Someone sent me a recording of some subliminal musical trance kind of thing. Um, and I listened to it and I felt uncomfortable and I don't know why. So I think it's important um, to be open to different things that you enjoy. Um, and if 80s music is what takes you to a, a place that can trigger a, you know, a, a happier time for you, that's certainly a, a really good thing. Uh, I'm also not a meditator. I can't, I, I don't enjoy just sitting and closing my eyes and doing deep breathing and chanting mantras. So that's why I developed a dulcet meditation. In fact, how I became a, uh, a teacher um, and a consultant or some would call a life coach um, is someone told me that the way I played the dulcimer is very meditative and he, he and I were talking about what I did to get over being broke and having cancer and re, rejuvenating my life, really restarting it. And part of that process was through playing the dulcimer, through dulcimer meditation. So he suggested, well, why don't you teach people how to do that? Because you did it. So I had to backtrack my steps. You know, what did I do? When did I do it? What was my attitude? How did the dulcimer help me? And how am I continuing to live a life that's far more pleasurable and successful than even in my music career? Fantastic. We've covered a fair bit here today, Kevin. What is something we haven't said that you feel the listeners need to hear? A lot of people want to know about how to like themselves more and, and how can I be happy? Everyone wants to be happy, but nobody knows what happiness is unless you really do a lot of what they call self-realization thinking. So what, what I do for people resume is I help them discover what happy is for them. Uh, I certainly know what it is for myself and I know certainly how to, to teach it to, to people because that's what I do for a living. But I would encourage either people contacting me and doing a, a, a complimentary Zoom session to discuss these things or to find other books on the subject, my book, Between the Notes. Uh, you can find, I don't know if you have it out there, but Amazon. <laughs> I think I think you have Amazon, don't you? In Australia? Yes, we, we do have Amazon here. Okay. So, or, or other books. But the most important factor is that you have to want to change. You have to say, I should be happier. My life can be better. And I don't need to stay stuck in this feeling of ambivalence and fear about my life. I mean, for me, it took a death sentence. So people don't need to hit the wall like that to wake up. You know, do you need to work that much? Do you need expensive car payments, and house payments? I mean, I live a very simple life. It's very enjoyable. So that's what I would, I would tell, you know, the, the folks listening is that, there is a way to be happier. There is a way to discover radical self-love. There is a way to deal with stress and to understand how to live your bliss, how to create a life you love. It's absolutely doable. 
Fantastic. And people can get hold of you at kevinroth.org. And listeners, don't forget to book that Zoom session with Kevin. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And listeners, thank you so much for your time. Go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health, that's holistic with a W, or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more. 